hello, good morning or good afternoon. My name is uh, Lorenzo Cremonesi, born in Milano, Italy in uh, 1957. Uh, I have been uh, special involved, graduated in philosophy in Milano. Uh, I've been a uh, um, uh, special journalist and then a correspondent and then so special envoy for Corriere della Sera since uh, early 80s, long time ago, almost 40 years ago. And since then, I follow more or less uh, Middle East uh, war and crisis up till now. So that means almost yeah. 40 years of Middle Eastern history being uh, uh, at the beginning based in Jerusalem as uh, first, first of all as a, as a um, local co contributor and then um, correspondent always for Corriere yes. from Jerusalem since uh, about 2000 so about uh, almost 20 years and then uh, and then since uh, 2000 2001 I've been special involved so that means and uh, I'm even if at the time Uh, of my period in Jerusalem, I was already moving around in the Middle East, Jordan. I follow the uh, Gulf crisis in between Iraq mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and the States at the, at the time of the invasion of, of, uh, of Kuwait, and then um, Jordan, Egypt, but I was mainly in Israel. Okay. After 2000, of course, and in the Palestinian areas. But after 2000, I've been all over. That means Afghanistan, Iraq, Uh, Lebanon, Libya, sure. all the make, Egypt, all the Arab Springs, the, the, the follow-up of the Intifada and the Palestinian crisis in Gaza, peace process, you name it. Up wow. till a yeah. few weeks ago, uh, where I was in, uh, in Libya, because of course in the last uh, period, yeah. uh, due to the importance of Libya for the Italian public, and the Italian state and the Italian interests have been mainly, not only, but mainly in Libya and Syria, but uh, mainly in Libya. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Uh, well, of course, since PAGE is the, the European project we are working on, um, aims con at contributing to the modernization of um, uh, the higher education sector in Libya. I would like to ask you a few questions about the Libya, of course, about the country. So basically, what do you think now the situation in Libya has changed since the revolution of February uh, 2011? Well, first of all, at the moment, really at the real moment, we are journalists, so we are working on, on daily news, right? Uh, sure. We are in the shadow of the events of, uh, which started on the 4th of April. Now, this video, I know, will be is, 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 is tailored to stay long, so I will mm -hmm. speak briefly, but, you know, this is really the, 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 the story of the day. We are, in the sh we are working and living the shadow, and Libya is living in the shadow of the decision, abrupt decision by uh, Marshal Khalifa after the strong man, mm. so-called strong man of Srinaika, yeah. to stop, abruptly stop the negotiation. We were on uh, the 4th of April in the um, proximity of the famous National Dialogue Conference organized by United Nations, which were supposed to take place in the south, of, in the, in the Fezzan, in the south of Libya area. Um, organized by Ghassan Salam, the, Libyan, the United Nations Special Envoy for Libya. But all these negotiations were abruptly stopped by the decision by after to attack, to move from uh, political dialogue to, or diplomatic and political dialogue to military means. And that broke all the status quo, all the process. And yeah. we are now in the shade of this military attack already more than two months ago by the uh, so-called national Libyan National Army, uh, which is at the order of uh, after, against the, 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 the numerous, the, the big number of militia and uh, uh, military elements which are at the order, which are supporting the government of national, of so-called uh, uh, national salvation government of uh, Far uh, Fayez Saraj, the Prime Minister in, uh, to, in uh, Tripoli. Uh, we will talk about that, but if I can be sum up briefly the history of Libya, which has been a difficult and bloody story of Libya mm -hmm. in the last years, I would say we moved uh, from the long, from the 70s, uh, from 1970, uh, dictatorship of uh, Gaddafi, 
uh, Colonel Gaddafi uh, to uh, the revolution of 2011, mm -hmm. uh, which was, as I call it, always a, not a real revolution, but a cause called assisted revolution. Uh, let me be clear. I was there all the time. I really yeah. followed that year, uh, the events in Libya thoroughly. And uh, let me say that without the uh, Western participation, the NATO intervention, especially by the military force, by military air forces of France and Great Britain, uh, the revolution would have failed uh, really at, at the start. So it's an artificial rev revolution in a way. Okay. Without its foreign intervention, Gaddafi would have prevailed in any way, would have, without any doubt. Okay. So uh, this has uh, very deep ramifications. I would say that because uh, you know, if we can compare this revolution with other revolution, let's say the Soviet Revolution, the French Revolution, or events uh, of this kind in human history. Revolution is always divided in two phases. There is one of the opposition, uh, which is uh, growing and opposing the, the state, the power on uh, which is governing the country. Uh, this is the, the first struggle. But the second struggle always is among the different components of the revolution, different mm -hmm. elements, different groups, yeah. among themselves in search of leadership. So there are always two sure. revolutions. The first one is against the regime. The mm -hmm. second one is among, among the statements which are making the revolution. And, that, and generally, this second revo revolution is even more bloody, even mm -hmm. more violent, more vicious than the first one. When okay. is clear, because it's, a, it's kind of a civil war in, in the deep sense. Yeah. And this, in a way, happened, but it happened later. Why? Because generally there is a kind of, uh, how can I put, natural selection, allowed me to use this word, among leaders mm -hmm. in, the, in the revolution. I mean, there are different elements, they, they revolt, and while they are revolting, they are fighting each other to have the supremacy of the revolution. But this, in a way, didn't happen because everybody was winning. Uh, okay. Because there was not a real fight. Every single fight, I really follow the fight in Benghazi, in Syria, yeah. in Ras Lanouf, all the way up and down along the coast, and then in Tripoli, and then in Zintan, and Zawiya, and in Beni Walid, and in Sirt, the last uh, battle of, of Gaddafi in Sirt. Okay. Always, always, I really I don't, re I don't recall a single case in which NATO didn't intervene. Okay. Without the intervention of NATO, as it was proven in the first month when the revolution started and there was no foreign intervention, Gaddafi would have won, always. Okay. So everybody arrived at the end of, of the revolution claiming that he was a hero. Everybody was a hero. There were a lot of bosses, a lot of chiefs, a lot of leaders mm -hmm. uh, claiming that they were the legitimate leaders. And this is part of the problem. The dynamic okay. of the revolution already showed at the beginning, at the incipit, at the real beginning, the problem. Because then everybody claimed he was uh, the one who was entitled to be the leader. So the, the, the real in, in fight started after, in a terrible, bloody way, Got which it. was then characterized by the tribalization of the country, which was already tribal, because one of the uh, means of the ways of Gaddafi to keep on power for such a long period had been to, div to follow the famous Roman uh, dictum, divided et impera. Gaddafi mm -hmm. never allowed a strong power in his own power. He was a man, everybody had to refer to him. So whenever there was a power starting from the army was too strong, he used to divide it and mm -hmm. to give little power to other elements so that there was no, never a monopoly of power except his own. Everybody had to refer to him. So it was easy for the dynamic of the post-revolution -re to work on this tribalization, this segmentation of this fragmentation of the country. So the country was already fragmented at the tradition of fragmentation. And that is part of the problem, not of the solution, because today the country, I mean, the, this fragmentation continued and even increased. So we have a, a country divided in, in multiple, in, 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 number, in a number of actors, and everybody claimed to be the real leader. Misurata, yeah. the Fezzan, the different municipalities, Tripoli. 
Zawiya Zintan is very important. So every leader, uh, especially the two, the two after, and uh, even if after claim to be the one who is really unifying the army, every leader has to cope, has to convince, has to cooperate with uh, different elements which are part of his, you know, environment. So every coalition is a, 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 a composition of forces which are among them, among themselves, uh, in fight, fighting in order to have the, the supremacy. Right. So that, just to be, to, to be to be short, uh, to mm -hmm. arrive to our time, the, the, this uh, fragmentation continued. Yeah. In, so the, the first election was, where in, I remember, in, in 2012 was really a parliament which was not a parliament, was a, 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 a kind of a kaleidoscope of, of, of parties, sometimes mm -hmm. one party, one, one member of, of, of the parliament representing his own listed constituency, little municipality, little tribe, etc. Okatiba, the different militia, militia grew, and this is a part of the problem, militia grew. And, um, and then, of course, all this collapse with a new element, and then here I stop, which is really, really characterizing this, the fight today and mm -hmm. the, give the dramatic character to the, to the fight. Okay. We have, with the weakness of the, of the main powers, we have, a, and the fact that the American, let's say mainly the American, are less and less present in the Middle East, not only in Libya. We have the uh, entering, the, the, the appearing of local, regional, forces. So we have today Saudi Arabia and Egypt supporting, especially Saudi Arabia and Egypt supporting um, uh, Aftar, while on the other side we have Turkey and Qatar supporting uh, Farage with Russia, with, uh, sorry, Aftar, of course, there is a sympathy of Russia, of France, Italy is divided, this is another problem we'll, we'll affront later. But in any case, the problem is that this war is going on because it's not using now anymore Libyan resources, which are limited, especially after so many years of, of, of troubles, but it's potentially illimited. There is no limit because like in Syria, like in Yemen, we have regional elements participating, supporting their own people, their own, uh, uh, their own uh, parts, parties. And so the war can potentially go on and destroy the country more and more. Sorry, but talking about um more from your point of view have you seen any changes in um in your job or you know how for example in the way you uh, collect news or uh, also the impression that you have from other libyan colleagues for example exactly because you you were talking about fragmentation of of the country so does it affect also your uh, your job absolutely yes uh, first of all here in Libya, but it's a general law, it's a general rule yeah. for all situation. Uh, there is always a difference between the foreign journalist mm -hmm. and the local one. Mm -hmm. Because the foreign journalist has some kind, some kind, depend on the situation in Libya more. And then remember, uh, we, I'm talking for a perspective of the media, which is from Italy. And Italy, as you know, has a special role in Libya more than in any other country. Mm -hmm. But in any case, the foreign reporter is somehow more protected, can be expelled before being killed or being put in prison. If you are not a persona non grata, if the government <laughs> power, the militia doesn't like you before killing you, we try to expel you or not give you the visa anymore, the access to the area. A local okay. journalist will be killed or persecuted in any way. And this happened in Egypt, this happened in Syria, this happened in Turkey, this happened in Yemen, all over the areas. Uh, so the perspective sure. of a foreign journalist, of a special envoy from major European media, Western media, is totally different from the perception of a local journalist, which is totally uh, subjugate, totally um, uh, controlled by the local power, which sometimes is not a local power, is a, as I say, constellation, kaleidoscope of power. So you have to somehow to navigate, to compromise, to make everybody mm -hmm. happy then nobody will be happy. So the situation is very bad. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me start saying that uh, I will talk, first of all, briefly about the local press. The local press is not free at all. As, as I okay. say, continuously, 
subjected to the pressure or the militia or the strong powers which are fragmented in uh, Tripolitania, in the area of uh, Tripoli and Misurata. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, totally controlled and then even more because at least in the Tripolitania, in the, in the Tripolitania area, there is a kind of uh, division of forces which guarantee some kind of freedom. While in uh, Cyrenaica, under, in the area controlled by the Khalifa Haftar forces, this is not the case. There is no way. It's a, it's a dictatorship in terms of media control, and there is no way that a journalist can be critical, for instance, of Haftar. He will not be able to publish. He will be persecuted. He will, okay. be, he will be persecuted. So there is no freedom at all. Mm -hmm. I would say that at the moment, because, not because of particularly will come goodwill by Saraj, even if Saraj basically is a pro-Western guy, is a culture, as an attitude. But uh, uh, I would say that today is a bit better, uh, talking from, from the perspective of a value of a liberal journalist, of a Western journalist, is a bit better in, uh, in Tripolitania, uh, uh, while uh, in the after region actually is, is worsening. You, if you yeah, are a local okay. journalist, you have to be pro-after. There is no other way. You have to be pro-after. Now, as a foreign journalist, uh, yes, we have to cope. And um, there is a problem with visa. Mm. If they don't like you, they don't accept you. And this was the same problem we had, we had to face at the time of Saddam Hussein in Iraq. We mm -hmm. had to face in Iran. Me, myself, I've been in, 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 in Iran a of, of, of couple of times. They don't like my reporting. I cannot go. The visa okay. is, uh, is very simple as that. We don't like you, you don't come. So the journalist has to cope with his professionality with his, you know, believe in what he's doing and in objectivity and, you know, being critical, being, you know, reporting what he sees and what it looks like to him, what he has to report. And the fact that he's becoming persona non, non grata will not have access. Is a case, for instance, in Syria. In Syria, for us, was terrible because at the beginning everybody went and then the regime decided we were not we're grata. And, and now the regime, the Bashar Assad regime is winning and there is no way I can go like many others. And the okay. people who go are generally people who are supporting the regime. So this is a basic problem. But for us, it's not a problem of uh, tendential. They are not going to kill us. They are going to tell us, my dear friend, you, uh, sometimes you they even better go. No. So this is the problem. This is a, and this problem in Libya is going to be there. Uh, okay. There are journalists who apply to go to after, and they were refused. Uh, there are journalists who apply to go to Saraj and they were refused or uh, strictly controlled without, for instance, one of the things that you want to do is to go to the to the front line when after doesn't allow you till now. Okay. I don't know later. Okay. But uh, with Saraj, we tried and if the a militia doesn't like you, they see your reporting, especially if you go on uh, you with your video, with your, you know, things like that are not only on the written press then you are basically torpedo and boycotted. Okay, but do, do you have any other uh, chances to collect news, like any sources in Libya, any people that can contact you or uh, to give you information about how also you can use your local sources? I'm sure you... Yes, well, I'm a strong believer in going to the place, right? Yeah. Because, uh, you, you know, yeah, social, sure. social media can be fake media. Uh, social media, are very, I have a lot of examples, and I don't want to enter uh, from Gaza Strip to... When you are a, someone who is living in a difficult situation, in a war situation, you report, your report is naturally... I mean, I don't condemn anybody. I would do the same. Biased. is not objective. I don't know what okay. is ob objectivity, but definitely you are conditioned... So you have to collect different, it's extremely complicated. So what you can do, if you go there, you know the area, you know some people you trust, yes, of course you can work, but you have to go first of all, and you know, the, and periodically go to there, because these people can be persecuted if anybody finds out they are giving you some information they are not particularly appreciated by the local regime, by the local strong men or strong militia or strong element which are governing the country where he's living. Remember, this guy has a family, this guy has a house, this guy has sure. a bank account, in, you know, we, you don't have to be killed. You can be persecuted in thousands of time before being killed. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's very clear. Uh, so, uh, 
talking about what you were um, referring before, uh, you don't see so much change about uh, from the Gaddafi's regime to to the present to the present time in order uh, of uh, censorship and uh, self censorship, though. Oh no, I, uh, uh, no. I, see, I see huge differences. Okay. I see huge differences. No, 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 no. don't, don't, uh, no, no, no. That's must be very clear. First of all, uh, you know, I was offered a couple of time before 2011 to go to Libya. I was not interested because I knew how it worked. It was a classic uh, regime, dictatorial regime. You mm -hmm. would go there, you would have someone of the called Muhabarat, of the secret uh, security police, of the mm -hmm. secret agent, following you, presenting it. You have to buy to pay him. You will pay, the spy will, will, will condition your work. And this is inevitable in any regime from Soviet Union on in the past uh, to, to wherever. Taliban, I was also with the Taliban before the fall of the Taliban in uh, 2011. Uh, the same problem, you, you couldn't go around alone. Um, so the, 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 the Gaddafi time was not interesting. Journalistic point of view was, was ridiculous because the regime conditioned, if anybody would be a critic of the regime would have be worried to talk with you, so sure. it's impossible for you to catch. And, and otherwise, it would be only people who were telling you that they love Gaddafi, that, that, that Gaddafi is their leader, they will die for Gaddafi, they will be supporting him till the death, etc., etc., etc. So it was not interesting. Was, sure. Yeah, you the, couldn't uh, you couldn't write or say anything. Could, uh, no, but... and then uh, ones would have published, would have say he would have said anything they wouldn't like. The next time they say, okay, you never come here. All right, thank you very much, arrivederci. But, uh, um, so it was not a real job, uh, a real work. Uh, no, today is not the case. First of all, you have two separate camps. So this guarantee you at least two point of view, which are then fragmented in thousands of point of view. I give you an example. Yeah. Uh, um, why after attacked on the 4th of, of, of uh, April? And I tell you why. Um, after uh, the first attempt to, to try to catch uh, Tripoli in September last year. Okay. It was an offensive by the Taruna, the famous Taruna 7th Brigade. Taruna is a city about 80, 70 kilometers south of Tripoli, where there were elements uh, connected with the old Gaddafi regime, very critical of uh, anybody who, re who replaced Gaddafi, actually searching revenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, very close to after. So they attack. At the time, Misurata, which is a kind of Sparta of uh, Libya, which is the city, we call it city state, really in the Greek fashion. Mm -hmm. um, so Misurata, which was the city, was more critical of uh, uh, after, uh, uh, decided last September not to intervene. They didn't intervene. Everybody was expecting, but not. They didn't do because they were fed up, because they were angry with uh, um, with Serraj for internal reasons. They say we don't defend you. So it was very difficult for the only for the militia in Tripoli to defend, to guarantee. They were able at the end to do it, but with great difficulty. After thought, okay, now I'll try with my army. I will join Taruna. I will add some other cities like Garian, like Bani Walid, like other cities which are or Zintan, which are particularly critical of the regime in uh, in Tripoli. And we will ent we'll enter because Tripoli actually it was, it was also pointing on the fact that, which is true, which is, I can guarantee you, which is true, a part of Tripoli is pro Sarra, is pro after fe being fed up of the militia, which act like bandits, like criminal totally arbitrary, their attitude, they are stopping people at the, at the check post, or taking cars, taking money, they're really sometimes like bandits. Okay. So they are fed up. So it was counting on them. But then we discovered that uh, once it was clear that uh, after was totally radically changing the status quo of his own attack, namely was going to take Tripoli, Misurata, Misurata reacted. Uh, in spite of everything, made an agreement with the militia in Tripoli, and they all together created a common front. And then after was blocked. And today after is, is in big trouble. Is the one who is losing because suddenly he discovered that Misurata is, is with Tripoli defending Saraj. So you see, situation changes, but this is a very interesting story to tell. 
because sure. it's, you know, and, and it's a story that you can make. You can talk with a different leader. I remember talking with leader of the militia in September myself in Misurata, we, I, who I knew very well because I was with them in 2016 in Sir. And these are the people oh, okay. who were, were fighting against Daesh, against ISIS in Sirt. And they suddenly were telling me, well, you know what? We don't give a damn about uh, Saraj. We don't defend him. And they were talking. So it's interesting. I would say the, from a media point of view, today Libya is incredibly interesting. And even if it's difficult, it's very much possible to talk, to, to work, to report. And again, I repeat, in the area which is under uh, Saraj forces, which are divided, articulated, fragmented, it's more easy than after than under after. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, may I ask you not the last question? I swear, because it's more about uh, our project. Uh, that means that we are um, um, we are designing uh, um, a pilot master course in cross media journalism. So I would I would like to have your opinion um, uh, about what would be um, the main or a competence, uh, main competences a journalist should have for working in the journalist field today as a, well, yeah, also as you do, like um, uh, writing, but also be able to, of uh, re, um, recording video, editing probably video and so on, like in, in the present well, time. Well, uh, today uh, journalism is... Uh much more complicated because of the, basically the technical global revolution, the communication revolution of the uh, last years affected, of course, journalists. Yeah. I am, um, my first work was a typewriter with a typewriter where there were no portable phone, where we used telefax or fax to send story if we were, or, or the, 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 you took to call by phone and dictate our, uh, yeah. ask, uh, to uh, a local uh, um, employee in Milano who would have, you know, listened my telephone call and write down my article by himself on his typewriter. Uh, there was no way to send your story or your pictures would have been taken you, you know, many, in many cases you would have gone to an area, go back to your house, to your newspaper, and then give them your video because in, especially in war situation, there was no technology to send your picture, to send, even to know what's going on. It sure. happened to me to be in Afghanistan in 2011, totally isolated. At the beginning, we already had some kind of satellite phone, but let's, pay, let's, say, let's take talk about the, the first intifada, first intifada in 1987, which is really my, 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 my school of, of, of war journalism in Gaza in 1987, mm -hmm. and 87, 88, 89. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to communicate, I even didn't know what's going on. It was my newspaper in the evening would tell me, Lorenzo, be careful. If there was a telephone line, by voice would have told me, look, we have report, talk. Reuters is reporting. But I, I didn't have any way to have the big uh, picture of the situation on the ground, even if I was in the middle of the crisis, myself on the ground. There are interesting pages by Oriana Fallace about this. Yes. Uh, okay, today is different, totally different. I, uh, it happened to me to report from the base camp of Everest, of K2, uh, in the Himalaya, to be with, together with uh, um, Pakistani troops against Indian at 6,000 meters in, uh, in high Kashmir, reporting with the satellite phone, even being able to, first of all, to see mail, sure. to see mail in real time, to send stories, to send pictures, sometimes even to send picture, uh, video with my little big gun, with my little uh, satellite uh, um, uh, met methodology, with my, with my satellite dish, which were connected with the satellite and I, I, could, I could communicate. So it's a totally, so a journalist has to follow, of course, social media, have to, has to be to able to, to follow what, what's going on on the, on the ground, thanks to the new technology. Mm -hmm. uh, me, as if I can mention my private job, my, sure. my job as an envoy, special envoy on the ground. Again, uh, I, before I used to travel with a photographer who was also a filmmaker, and I would finish my long day on, in the field, write, sit down, write my story, and then go, go, go for a good dinner. Today is not the case. 
there, write your story, and then you spend two hours just to send a picture because the line is not so good, but you have the picture. <laughs> your paper is waiting for your picture. They're yeah. waiting for this possible little video, which will also, and this I say in a kind of malicious way, but <laughs> it's basically true. You, you, once it was possible to say that you were in Baghdad, but you were not in Baghdad, you were in Rome. Today you have to prove that you are there and you have your video, you have your picture, I am really here. So in a way, this is a guarantee that you are there. And uh, Italian journalism, is, is, I think, is very healthy. <laughs> and and now you you have to be able to do to follow all the process. That means take, taking picture, uh, shooting video, editing it. Or are you going around with? Well, uh, no, no, no. I no money. You do have it. That, that, that is another problem, which is really common in European press. Less in the American. I'm not talking about Western, but uh, not in the Chinese. They are very rich, the Chinese. Mm. But uh, definitely the European press, from British to, to, to French to Italian, we have little budget. So yeah. we have to, be, the, to work, to go around with a, a cameraman or a, a, a photographer, it's really, really rare. It, it happened to me lately, for instance, when Mosul fall, but it was a friend and it was he, he, the money he, he, he got to take vid video and picture in a very dangerous situation on the front line against Daesh. Uh, he did it because he liked it, because it's... it's yeah. so but the money are around and not paying back the risk. We move from 500, if not more, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 euro for pictures or video, even yeah. more, taken in a worth gone to 50, 60, 70 euro. You understand that it's ridiculous. Ridiculous, okay. Well, okay, thanks a lot. Uh, we are fine. Thank you very much for your time, Lorenzo Cremones.